so now you have this ota and let us say this has sufficiently large gain and why do you think i need sufficiently large gain or infinitely large gain yeah i mean why do you want to make good op amps with infinitely large gain to be used in negative feedback so let's say i take this ota and i know that this can be used for driving capacitive loads a single stage ota and i finally will be using it in some kind of negative feedback like this a simple configuration so now let's actually see what will happen if i have a capacitive load and use this guy in negative feedback yeah but before that let's uh, actually understand how inputs will be fed to this circuit so what i'll do i'll take a simple inverting amplifier configuration made using an ota so let's say it's an ota like this you make an inverting amplifier so let us say this is r1 r2 everyone has seen an inverting amplifier right okay so we'll draw it neatly okay so if i have a small signal vi what will be the output here minus r2 by r1 times v fine everyone knows but of course now at this point you should know that i cannot connect this to ground because this is going to oh before that let's actually figure out what is a plus and minus terminal right so in a op amp let's take a step back i know this is v out let's figure out what is the plus and minus terminal hmm? so how do you find which is the plus and minus terminal here Hmm? I want to find what is the positive and negative terminal here. So how do you suggest we proceed? Okay, let's. Huh? Okay, let's assume. Yeah, let's say we we'll increase voltage at let us say left side. So what will happen to the current in the transistor? Increase. If the if more current is being pulled out of this node, what will happen to this node? that node voltage reduces so this basically means the gate voltage of the pmos reduces if the gate voltage of the pmos reduces what can you say about the current which means more and more current is getting pushed into this node what will happen to this node voltage so what is the plus terminal now yeah so this was the plus this clear okay then let's look at this now yeah so this is the inverting amplifier we saw but here now at least it should be clear that this plus terminal which is essentially the gate voltage of an nmos transistor you cannot directly go and connect it to ground so again this is only an ac ground so in practice what do you connect it to yeah some dc bias voltage so let's say it is some db similarly even this input you don't feed it as it is you added proper dc bias point so let us say that is also the same vb although it could have been a different vb okay. now tell me what do you think this voltage will be approximately this will be approximately what yeah by again uh, assuming that things are all biased properly this ota gives sufficiently large gain again this is a negative feedback then you can invoke uh, asymptotic equality or virtual ground principle which means this gives vb so now tell me with respect to the dc this voltage is vb this voltage is vb what is the dc current flowing here zero dc current flows here what can you say about the dc current flowing through r2 i mean the dc current flowing here is zero what should be the dc current flowing here non zero why non zero yeah. i mean forget about v out right this is kcl right this current should be equal to this current because right gate is open so this dc current is also zero so which means what should be the dc voltage at the output vb is it clear so that is the total output here 
now it makes sense so the dc uh, voltage at the output is vb and on top of it you have the small signal so now the natural question as an op amp designer or as an uh, you know someone who is selling an op amp or an ota is to say what is the range of voltages i can use uh, range of voltages i can have for the bias voltage and the small signal vi right now again uh, the brute force way will be for you to draw the entire transistor level schematic of the ota and then you would have done it in your earlier analog circuits course you write the dc operating point all the small signal voltages small signal currents and you then the take the total voltage total currents for each transistor you find what is the you know like condition for it to be in saturation based on that you get a final limit but uh, with op amps the issue is you never know what circuit the op amp will finally be used in the only thing you know that the only thing you will know is this will be used in some negative feedback system so this could be this kind of an inverting amplifier or it could be a non inverting case like this you never know what's it going to be used so it doesn't make sense that you tell the user to draw the entire transistor level schematic solve for all voltages all currents and do it that's not practical so instead what we do is this we try to specify what is the maximum and minimum voltages i can have at the input and at the output of the op amp fine so we are interested in let us say inverting non inverting voltage ranges for these three if you specify that's good enough right because in your final circuit you will know what is this inverting non inverting terminal voltages in terms of your bias voltage and vi if you know ranges for these you can back calculate what is your range for vb and vi okay and now tell me uh, when it is used in negative feedback what can you say about the inverting and non inverting terminal voltages huh when it is used in negative feedback what can you say about these two voltages they are going to be approximately equal so which means i will say that the differential voltage i'll say approximately zero right so we in turn uh, reduce the constraints like this instead of specifying both v minus and v plus that is instead of looking at the voltages individually we decompose it as a differential mode part and what is other component common mode part now you see the differential part is zero so you don't have to worry about any constraints on the differential input the only thing you need to worry is the common mode which is the average and we will define this to be the input common mode the icm okay so our job is now the following instead of specifying ranges for two different inputs we now will only look at the icm right because two inputs i can decompose as differential and common mode the differential mode is zero no need to worry about it so we'll only worry about the common mode and of course you also have to specify the output okay so that is why uh, in practice we only specify the range for the input common mode and the output is the motivation behind specifying these two voltages clear okay so that's what we do for op amps even if you take any data sheet of an op amp maybe we'll do that later in the course you'll find uh, specifications on these two so it means now let us say for example i know that the input common mode has to be within some range say between v1 and v2 i know what is vicm in this circuit right what is the input common mode voltage in this circuit vb it is the average of the inverting and a non inverting terminal voltage which is vb so that straight away gives you the range you can have for vb similarly if you know the range i can have for v out i know what is the range of voltages i can have for this expression i know what is vb so i can find what is the range i can have for vi 
that's how you operate so similarly if you use it in a different configuration say i use it in this configuration here the vicm will be different v out will be different so again you can back calculate 